Like, comment, and subscribe if you like the content. I try to do a video like this monthly, so I hope you enjoy the video and watch till the end. All of these things really help out with the channel. Today we're talking about the NES title, Conquest of the Crystal Palace. Known in Japan as Metadon Donji, Demon Heaven Boy, and created by Quest. Well known for its members, Yatsumi Matsano, Matsuhara Iwata, Hiroshi Minagawa, and Akihiko Yoshida, creators of the Tactics Ogre franchise. In 1995, three of them left Quest to join Square, developing Final Fantasy Tactics, one of my favorite games of all time, and the artistic and masochistically difficult masterpiece, Vagrant Story. While also having worked on Final Fantasy XII, as part of Square Enix's now remastered Final Fantasy XII Zodiac Age, before Quest was purchased by Square, and the acquisition reunited some of Quest's developers with their former colleagues to make Final Fantasy Tactics Advanced and Final Fantasy Tactics A2. While the Ogre Saga creator Yatsumi Matsuno left the company in 2005, the legendary Yatsumi Matsuno with Masuhara Iwata working on Crystal Palace in 1990, one of Quest's earliest games as a planner and composer combo. Asmic publishing Conquest in America, and as was the case with most NES games, Conquest of the Crystal Palace was subject to significant alterations for its US release, removing ghostly children, being altered into insects, completely representing how actually horrible they are. And because Westerners can't handle the difficulties of Eastern video games, the game's difficulty was generally reduced and cheat codes were added that allowed the player to restore their health to full and give themselves extra lives at any time. With all its history, it's a bit crazy to think that this game is not very well known. With it being a sort of catalyst for these legendary games and their designers, whose works are still being seen today. The Kingdom of the Crystal Palace was conquered by an evil being named Zaris, chasing out Zap, a dog who served as the keeper of the Crystal Palace, and Pharaon, the kingdom's infant prince, escaping before the game's beginning. Years later, the now teenage Pharaon must now retake the Crystal Palace using one of three magical crystals. Zap, and the help of the shopkeeper Kim, they must fight through five perilous realms to defeat Saras and retake the Crystal Palace. If you have played any retro game of this era, you should already know the difficulty was used to pad these games out. The NES cartridges contained max 384 KB of RAM and memory. To put into perspective, your average JAV is... and they're usually longer in length. Old school gaming developers had a remedy to how little you could do with the memory size. Games would take about 5 to 10 enemies, recolor them to add variety, and place them in just the right spots to make everything miserable. To increase the length of the game and add content. Like using instant death pits or spiked places in areas where you'll get knocked back into them after being hit, specifically to frustrate and kill you. Like when you're recording a video and forgot that one monkey over and over and over again. But I do prefer this type of padding over games like Mylon's Secret Castle. This is just mean. For you younger viewers, you have to shoot a random block in the level to progress. Every level, specifically. But current day gaming has replicated this by making it fun and soul crushing. Just look at Curse of the Moon, or one of the many known indie retro games like Shovel Knight, taking heavy inspiration from games like Conquest. All right, I'll admit, they were usually looking at early Mega Man, Castlevania, and Ninja Gaiden. So many of these games worked off the same principles of Conquest. Crystal Palace does have a Helmbringer before DMC, even if it makes the game a lot harder. <laughs> Conquest, unlike a lot of games of this era, gives you choices. The first thing you're given is a game-long perk, a crystal 
giving one of three powerful tools, like the Spirit Crystal. So you have an unlimited amount of long range attacks. While not as damaging as the sword, it's great for staying safe, killing enemies before you have to make a difficult jump, and killing weaker enemies. The Life Crystal has a permanent buff of 25% more HP, allowing you to take more damage and letting the player take more risks. Or the Flight Crystal, making tight jumps way easier, allowing for more room for error or skipping some difficult obstacles. All of this can be purchased for a limited time or until you die. And with technically two health bars to watch, the Princes and Zap, you're talking dog, that can be summoned to fight at any moment, taking damage when he hits someone or something, picking up items and money, being what makes this game special, because at any time, you can summon your dog to fight in combat, giving you an NPC ally. Now, depending on what you have, you may have to meet the merchant. Kim, selling everything we need. Whenever you die, you will have to repurchase all of your upgrades that are not included with your starting Pokemon. Also allowing you to purchase healing herbs for you and Zap. So collecting every coin is important because having all three major upgrades makes traversing the levels easier and in some cases possible. Climbing a mountain with non-stop death pits protected by grape apes and sadistic piranha plants when you're not fighting mud men. Even multiple paths up the mountain with shortcuts if you have the right equipment. It even has honestly the coolest boss fight fighting a warrior and his pet, an eagle casting thunder. Level 2, the skill check level. It's so difficult in fact that even after all these years of owning this title, I never beat the boss. But for this video, I toughed it out. Utilizing difficult, cluttered platforms, non-stop pitfalls, and thwomp-like spiked platforms. But that's the easy part, because even the snow falling from the sky is your enemy. And when you combine all of these together... And that's all before the boss fight. But don't worry, it somehow gets easier from here. Level 3, usually the last level of most Contra games, is the second hardest platforming level, mostly from these two jumps. If you don't have the high jump, you'll need perfect timing or luck jumping off your dog. And this blind leap is pretty bad. And if you're prepared for the boss, you'll have no problems, especially with a good weapon and the right positioning. Level 4 is a long hallway of fire and death. If you play with confidence, then this can be easy. Collecting an invulnerability power-up and jumping through the most evil fire pillars and monster placements of the game. With fire on the floor and ceiling, meaning you can't jump too high or you'll get toasted. And if you fall, you're gone. If you take it slow and don't get any power-ups, it is the most difficult level in Crystal Palace, but at least the boss is easy. Level 5, the final level, is evil in its own right. With evil enemy placements, Medusa head type enemies, boss fights everywhere, and even a very, very punishing maze. 
with a very sinister trap at the end. You have to destroy this door before the ceiling falls on you. Yeah. But after that is the final boss. Both of them. Remember level 2? How do you make that boss harder? We take away the floor, and he can fly now. I was here for a very long time. And then the real final boss. Only took me two tries to beat him, but if you fail, you go all the way back to before the door. Let's just say, I lost a lot of lives. Very rarely do you come across an NES title with so much character. Like Kim, getting mad at you if you try to rip her off. If you beat a boss with your dog out, you'll both do a celebration dance together. And how some bosses seem to have a theme of working with their pets just like you. While I can't say this is some hidden gem classic that's a must play, it is interesting to see where some of my favorite Japanese games of all time came from. And it is an NES title, so if you got two hours, why not play through it? It has a pretty good continue system, making it infinitely easier to play than a lot of other old school titles. And it can be fun to survive the BS that these old school games used to throw at you. <laughs> 